I'm Joe from As the Joe Flies. And I'm Leslie from Trips with Tykes. And welcome back to Disney Deciphered. So uh, we took last week off. Happy Memorial Day to everyone uh, in the United States. And uh, yes, it was uh, partially because, you know, we had some stuff going on, some medical stuff going on, which uh, made us realize it's, it's a good it's a good episode to have. I mean, I, I just, my family just recently had medical is- issues at Walt Disney World. So we thought it would be a good time to talk about, you know, what to do when you have medical issues at Disney. And uh, we'll probably say this a couple times in the episode, but do want to shout out Turing Plans blog also released an article about getting first aid and being sick at Disney um, around the same time. So, uh, you know, it all felt like it was all lining up there. But uh, before we talk about how to deal with medical issues at Disney or what options you have, Leslie, we do have some new Patreon supporters to thank. So who do we got this week? Yes, we are thanking new Patreon supporters, Lauren I and Sarah F. Thank you so much for supporting the podcast. If you want to get on board um, that train, you can go to patreon.com slash Disney Deciphered and we give you all sorts of unfiltered episodes, bonus content when we're in the parks. Um, definitely just want to thank our, our patrons and everybody else for uh, letting me take last week off. It was my medical issue and almost had a, an issue at while I was at Disneyland, actually. It was 24 hours after I got home from a very quick um, Disneyland conference that I ended up in the ER, but I'm good now. So, so thanks everybody for bearing with us, but very, very timely episode. Yes. Uh, of course, glad you're okay, Leslie, and uh, yeah, the wonders of modern medicine. Um, and yes, great that you had to deal with it at home and not at Disneyland. Although, uh, you know, you were there for a conference, but uh, did not even go in Disneyland. You know, that that's how quick no. your trip was. It was that quick of a trip, but you know, it's it's it just doesn't make sense not being a magic key holder and. You know, we had conferences all day long. We were done at five, so I wasn't going to pay for a theme park ticket to go in for just a couple of hours, especially the main night I was there was a Star Wars after hours party. So the park closed at eight. So it just wasn't worth it. But I did good in downtown Disney. So, yeah. Yeah. Bring back the after 5 p.m. tickets, you cowards. Um, So we're going to talk about medical issues. Uh, Wanted to start by saying, you know, just talking about our experiences with any medical issues that we've had at Walt Disney World. Uh, If you listen to my trip report in February, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more later in the episode, uh, my wife, you know, had some, she had some concerns and we at when we were at Walt Disney World. And the reason why they were serious, more serious concerns was because we were going to be getting on the Disney dream right after our Walt Disney World trip. So we had to take care of some of that there. But like I said, we'll talk about it later. Besides that, I don't think we've ever, you know, I think knock on wood, we have not gotten sick at Disney, um, which has been pretty lucky, you know, allergies sometimes, um, but no like actual illness, no fever or anything like that. I don't know about you, Leslie, any experiences um, getting ill at Disney, any, any of the Disney properties. I mean, I'm talking, yeah, I'm talking all the Disney properties in the world. I've been actually, we have been healthy for. Yeah, we have had some sickness at Aulani. That has been the place, I guess, we've had the most issues. My son's eardrum burst. Um, one time we were there. Another time he just got like kind of a 48 hour fever virus of unknown origin and, you know, had to sort of hang out and be down for the count. We always have migraines, you know, that <laughs> with my youngest. Um, so that usually takes him out for, you know, half of a day just to sleep off the migraine. Um, usually we have that, gosh, like 50% of our trips at some point in time, just had a brief bout of it on Disney Cruise. So we've had a lot of little things, but but nothing major. And then, of course, I caught, caught COVID at Walt Disney World last summer, but kind of started feeling sick on the flight home. So I kind of missed dealing with it at the parks, but it was could not have been closer to, you know, maybe having been quarantined in Florida for 10 days. Yes, indeed. And of course, um, you know, it goes without saying, we hope that no one gets sick um, on their trips, but we thought this is a good episode to have because, you know, it's the reality that uh, people get sick sometimes. And now that, you know, COVID is whatever you think about it, you know, the CDC has declared it no longer an emergency. Um, that means people are going to be sick at the theme parks all the time. And they, they, they always have been in the past as well. I mean, you know, COVID just kind of highlighted things a little bit more. So let's get to it. I, you know, I want to start, Leslie, by talking about just some of the 
practicalities of how you plan your trips. And I'm curious, like, do you bring your own medicine? Like what kind of medical supplies do you typically pack? And before you go, I will say that for us, it's the same whether we're going to Walt Disney World or on any vacation. Same for us too. I'm a, I am a walking medicine cabinet. My, everybody in my family uh, are doctors. Uh, dad, grandparents, both granddads, many extended family members. So I guess by extension, I sort of take on that role of for my family of trying to make sure that everybody's covered, um, even though I didn't pay for medical school. So yeah, I have a basically a giant kit of everything. And if we're going internationally, I'm taking everything because. You just don't know what's going to be available um, in terms of brands and dosages and things like that. So at Disneyland Paris last summer, we had everything. But I'm carrying like Benadryl, Sudafed, uh, Tylenol, Advil, um, something stomach like Imodium or Pepto, uh, lots of Band-Aids, like basic first aid kit for like cuts and scrapes and blisters. So that is everything that's in like my suitcase. And then I'm packing sort of smaller quantities of that in like my purse daily. So, you know, I guess I'm I'm the Boy Scout. I am very well prepared. But, you know, we've used all of those things over the years as much as we travel with our kids. What about you, Joe? Well, first of all, um, you became a lawyer disappointing your entire family. So um, great job there, Leslie. But uh Asian dad joke there. But um, what we do, very similar. You know, I think the actual medicines we bring are different, but we bring a uh, bag of medicines. I will say that we are a carry on only family. So, and you are too, uh, mostly, but we don't bring any bottles that are like bigger than the four ounces. Uh, I will also say that, you know, now the 10 year old will take any pill. Um, the seven-year-old will take small like allergy pills. Um, and so getting to the point where we can all take the same medicine has really made things like a lot easier. Like, you know, we don't need to bring as much. We just need to bring a small dose of children's Tylenol now instead of like, you know, we used to worry about using it for all three of them. And so that has really helped. Um, first aid kit, same. Um, we have multiple like of the travel size first aid kits that we restock and we keep that. Now, the one thing that um, we have that you don't have, Leslie, is an EpiPen uh, for our youngest daughter who has um, allergies that require that. And I will put on a little aside here that we forgot it on our last trip. Again, if you listen to the trip report in February 2023, you heard this. But uh, we forgot the EpiPen. Um, and so if you ever find yourself in that situation, we were able to contact our pediatrician back at home. They were able to put in, you know, luckily we hadn't gotten one in six months, which is, you know, how often we can get new ones or a year. I can't remember exactly what the time frame is. Um, they put in a prescription to a CVS, a local CVS in Windermere um, or Kissimmee. Kissimmee. Yes, I, I recall that we had this issue last time, uh, Kissimmee. And we had a rental car, so we were able to pick it up. But you, of course, you can Uber there. So if you forget your stuff, don't fear. Um, you, there are always pharmacies all over the place. And if it's not EpiPen level, um, over-the-counter stuff, uh, you can get it at Disney itself, which we're about to get to. But uh, I did also want to talk about general medical tips for trying to stay healthy at Walt Disney World. Summer is coming up. Um, and so first of all, you really need to hydrate, take breaks, don't push your kids. Leslie, I know we're terrible about this, but really like Drinking water regularly is very important. Very, very important. I mean, the forced march of happiness also needs to involve the forced march of drinking water while doing it. Because, I mean, it really is heat levels in the summertime that a lot of people aren't used to. I mean, last summer when I took my son and we met up with you briefly, Joe, I mean, that's the hottest we've been anywhere in the last year because we live in a place that's a mild climate climate we're not used to that so you really do have to take those breaks you need to seek out shade so you know go early um go hard early go hard late but during that heat of the day just be prepared that you're just every step is going to suck it out of you yeah because you know if you you know the less you're going to be waking up at 6 50 a.m to do genie plus or maybe buying Genie Plus at midnight, like these are all things that are really going to weaken your immune system and give you the chance to get sick. Um, and then on top of that, in the summer, or maybe not even in the summer, like when we were there in February, it was 85 degrees, um, less humid, but still 85. Uh, I had the privilege of teaching biology, Leslie, this year for the first time in quite a while. And uh, we had a lesson that 
kind of focused on heat stroke and I'd forgotten. And this is a good reminder for people that heat stroke is when, um, and I know, you know, wannabe Dr. Leslie knows this already, but, uh, yeah, I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep writing this. Uh, if you're not watching a video, youtube.com slash at Disney notes decipher, you can see how offended Leslie is every time I make one of these doctor jokes, but, uh, heat stroke is like your body stops being able to regulate your temperature. Like you stop sweating a lot of the time. Like, you know, you stop being able to cool down. There's no way to cool yourself down. This is what we had taught the kids. Like if you have heat stroke, there's no way to cool yourself down except for to physically put you in someplace cool or like dunk you in water or something. So you really want to avoid having that situation. Heat stroke is a serious medical emergency um, and you don't want to have that. So at Walt Disney World, uh, episode 228, we talked about ways about staying cool, hydrate, cooling towels, keep yourself wet as much as possible. But the problem is, you know, in Florida with the humidity, your sweat and even cooling towels that you have on you, like that liquid's not evaporating, so you're not cooling down. So definitely be careful with all of that. All right, let's talk about locations where you can go when you're feeling sick at the park. So Leslie, where are, you know, there are four parks and two water parks. Where can people go if they are feeling sick and need first aid? Sure. So you want to seek out the um, first aid station, and there's one in every park. In Magic Kingdom, it's between Casey's Corner and the Crystal Palace, just at sort of the corner of the hub and Main Street USA. So it's sort of tucked away right there. And in Epcot, it's in the Odyssey Building, which is between Test Track and the Mexico Pavilion. Hollywood Studios Easiest one to find of all, it's to the left of the entrance right as you enter the park. It's right next to guest services, so you, you can't miss that one. And then um, Animal Kingdom is on Discovery Island near Creature Comforts. And I have to admit, I don't think I've ever noticed that one or um, had reason to, to seek it out. So that, that one might be hidden to some people. And then um, two water parks, there's one in each of them. Typhoon Lagoons is near Leaning Palms and Blizzard Beaches is near Lada Wada Lodge. Now, this isn't um, first aid related, but we thought it would be good to put in a quick aside here. The baby care centers in each of the four theme parks, um, there are not baby care centers at the water parks as far as I know. But the baby care centers, they're located in the same place. Um, one thing that I learned while doing research for this episode, Leslie, is if you have a missing kid, they are actually brought to the baby care centers. Um, I would have thought they brought them to guest services or whatever, but I guess now that I think about it, it makes sense because there's multiple guest services at some of the parks, whereas there's only one baby care center. So in the unlikely event that you lose track of one of your kids, they'll be brought to the baby care center. And um, finishing off this aside, the baby care centers are all pretty different, but they all come with nursing rooms, chairs, baby supplies. Um, you can buy formula, baby food, juice, diapers, all that kind of stuff if you need to. Um, my wife used all four, I think. I'm trying to recall, like the one at Animal Kingdom actually might have been her favorite. We've never been to any of the first aid centers, but we've been to all the baby centers. Um, but yes, if you still have a child who's young, who's nursing, or even a young child that you need to keep cool for a little while, um, you can check out the baby care center. Or the, the first aid centers also are places where you can go to cool down for a little bit. Going to put in my second plug here. We're getting a lot of this info, uh, although not the baby care center stuff, um, from Touring Plans blog when they posted about first aid at Walt Disney World. So just want to give them another shout out. And of course, the link is in the show notes. So baby care center aside over, what can we get at the first aid centers, Leslie? So I guess a lot of things that I just named were already in my uh, packing list, but they have all the usual sort of over-the-counter remedies. That's why you've never been, by the way. Leslie. That's, That's right. No, I have. Been. I have been <laughs> to, to the, the ones to at the Disneyland. Animal Kingdom one. You were <laughs> I've been to the Disneyland ones. I haven't been as much to the Disney World ones because I, I guess I prepare more for my my world trips. But so over-the-counter remedies. So you know things like basic medications, um, things for bug bites, things for stomach bug issues. They also have um, refrigerators so that if you have prescription medicines of your own that need to be refrigerated to um, be stored properly, you can store them there for the day. So that's something nice. You don't have to sort of bring around a, a cooler with you if you don't want to. They have like the usual band-aids and blister stuff because that's really the most common reason that I've gone to first aid centers over the years at Disney parks. The blisters are real after, you know, 20,000, 30,000 steps and, you know, quiet space to lie down. So again, if you have that kind of like 
heat stroke or somebody's just not not feeling great and maybe you're not quite ready to call it a day and go back home to the hotel and you just want to sort of see if it passes that's a great place to be also private spaces if you have treatments of your own that you need to administer you know people i think too with like a lot of diabetics um, need to do testing and and maybe insulin shots things like that so that's a, a great place to go and then there are medical professionals there and if it's something more serious that doesn't pass or that you need to escalate, then they can get you to urgent care or on an ambulance into a hospital. And I do have a friend, um, a blogger, so don't ever say we're not working hard for you, who did get like a pretty serious heat stroke um, at a Disney park and went in an ambulance <laughs> to one of the ERs. So, you know, it does it does happen. Yeah, my understanding is that they have nurses on site, like registered nurses on site. And then um, they, you know, if you need a doctor, doctor, they will help you get transportation. I mean, it sounds like in typically, at least sometimes they'll just call you like, I think for an ambulance, you know, that gets worked out with your insurance or whatever. But for, you know, I know that like, if you're at the theme park, and you're not feeling well, and you need to get back to your hotel resort, um, I think Disney will like pay for the lift or the taxi or whatever to get you back. I think because they don't want you, you know, on the Disney buses, like getting everyone else sick. Um, and so, and, and kind of in the same vein, like you can buy multiple doses of medicine or things like that. But if you need just like a single dose of Advil or things like that, I think they'll, they just have single use doses for free. All right. And then the other thing to know is that if you're at your hotel, it's actually, you're like kind of better off if you're at the parks because they have the first aid center. If you're at the hotel, they don't have any of these um, nurse stations or anything like that, but there's lots of over the counter uh, drugs and things that you can buy um, at the shops, cough medicine, allergy medicine, Tylenol, whatever you need um, to deal with whatever you're undergoing um, at any given point in time. In terms of emergency rooms that are nearby, there are three. We'll just put them in the show notes. Although I will say that um, I think it's kind of been big news, at least down there in the Orlando area. Advent Health is opening a new ER right by Flamingo Crossing, which is very close to Disney World. If you stayed off site, you probably know where that is. That's opening this summer, 2023. People are pretty excited about that. Um, once that one's open, there's going to be four urgent care centers that are pretty close by um, if you need to uh, have medical treatment. Or uh, you can do uh, what we ended up doing. Now, uh, again, if you didn't listen to our February trip report, what happened was my wife was feeling abdominal pains, couldn't quite identify what they were. And then because we were going on the cruise, we didn't want her to, you know, um, we had dealt with a burst appendix in a family member recently. So we didn't want to deal with that on a cruise ship. So we needed her to get checked out, but we did not want to go to, even though we had a rental car, we did not want to go to an ER and like drag all three kids. And then when you go to the ER, like sometimes you have to wait for like four or five hours. Um, and because of the situation my wife was in, we kind of didn't really want to send her on her own um, to the ER either. Um, so what we did was we called a medical concierge. Yeah, we found them actually at the medical concierge.com and they sent a nurse over um, to the beach club, which is where we were staying. And she checked my wife out at our hotel room while I took the kids out to, uh, I think we went to Cape May Cafe for dinner. While we were having dinner, they checked her out. All in all, it was just a checkup. I can't remember. Maybe I don't, I don't think they gave her any medicine or anything like that. Um, it was $338 for the visit, which was not as much as I was expecting. So um, it's a lot of money, but it was not as much as I was expecting. Um, and they also, I think I didn't mention this last time, Leslie, but they, the medical concierge, at least this group, they have clinics that you can go to where they have every kind of test you might want to get, CAT scan, ultrasound, all that stuff. So my wife had actually been scheduled for a CAT scan the next day, which was the day we were supposed to leave for Miami for the cruise. But uh, ultimately, we decided to cancel it because um, it seemed like she was going to be okay. So the medical concierge do both house calls and or you can go into clinic and you can get like a lot of tests. And, it, you know, I will say that, um, you know, for those of you who watched Royal Pains back in the 2010s or whatever on USA, um, you can see why people pay for these concierge, concierge doctors just because of the convenience. Um, you know, there are no concierge lawyers as far as I know. 
Leslie, uh-uh. got you again. <laughs> so, I think or, there are. Or they're I'm all sure concierge there lawyers. They're, they're all good. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's Unless right. you're a public but, defendant. That's I'm right. sorry. I'm sorry. Um, so, just, brutal, so yeah, that, just brutal today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. It's, it's one of those days. I know. You, can't, you come back from medical leave, Leslie, and I'm just picking on you. I'm terrible. I'm a That's terrible right. person. That's right. No, but I mean, I have to say, having just spent... Um, 24 hours in an ER, that was the right call to make on a Disney vacation. I mean, if there's ever a time in your life to pay for this, and especially if it's, if you're, if you're just like in your situation, it's likely not something serious, but you're worried about it being something serious. That's a great use of this concierge service. And um, do you happen to know, Joe, was um, the, the nurse, was she a, a nurse practitioner, an RN? Do you know sort of the credentials of who they usually send? Ah, uh, I think she was an RN. Um, although I think they did have nurse practitioners on call as well, but I think it was just kind of, you know, luck of the draw. Um, but I don't totally remember. But what I did want to say, um, especially in terms of the cost, and we kind of want to end the episode talking about this a little bit, is um, we do as a family have an annual travel insurance plan that covers us anytime we're over a hundred miles away from home. I have put in a, ours is with Alliance. Allianz. I have put in a claim with them, um, but I just did it like a few days ago when we decided to do this episode. I should have done it months ago, obviously, but I only did it a few days ago. So I haven't heard um, whether they have um, accepted the claim or not. But, you know, if that claim works out, then even more so um, using the medical concierge was the way to go. So and I'm pretty sure, you know, because I'm, I'm, I'm positive that you know we have pretty good insurance. It would have been like any ER visit we would have done in Orlando would have been covered. Um, so, but if this is covered, um, that will be great. But we did want to talk a little bit about Disney's travel protection. They have recently updated the pricing, Leslie. So, can you share with us uh, what the prices are now if you're buying travel protection through Disney? Sure. So Disney's program is $95 per adult and kids under 17 are free. So um, important to know you don't need to or have to buy it until you make your final payment. So this is not something that you need to sort of plop the money down for, you know, six months, 12 months in advance. So you can wait until that that uh, 30 day final payment is due. Um, And in terms of what it covers, It provides up to $25,000 of coverage if you get ill or injured on your trip in emergency medical protection. And then it also includes emergency evacuation and repatriation coverage um, up to $100,000. So if you need transportation to get back, you know, I guess to home to have surgery or something like that there, then it will cover $100,000. But really important to know, this is underwritten not by Disney. It's by a third party called Arch Insurance Company. So you'll have to file a claim with them. Um, Again, I don't have any sort of personal experience with these folks. I think a lot of frequent travelers do use Allianz. That's um, who I have been looking now that I've had a medical event at at, uh, purchasing just for my travels more generally. But if you're only doing Disney, then this is is definitely something to, to consider. Yes. And um, it bears repeating, um, do not, I would say, do not add the travel protection until you make your final payment. Number one, it makes it a real pain. You have to call every time you want to change your trip um, if you've added the travel protection. And number two, before you have to make final payment at Disney, you get all your money back anyway. Um, So, you know, if you're thinking about buying the Disney travel protection plan, Buy it because you want to be covered in case something happens on the trip. Don't buy it to protect your trip before it happens um, just because you don't need to because Disney's going to give you your money back anyway. Um, And, you know, technically, after final payment, you lose $200 if you cancel your trip. Um, But I've yet to see personally um, any clients have to pay that. We've just moved their trips to later dates, and Disney has been happy to just keep their money and not take away $200. Uh, Leslie, are you looking into to any annual travel plans or anything like that now that um, you've had your issue and we've realized that we're firmly, as we've said before, in middle age and no longer invincible. (laughs) Yes, we're old. We're in our 40s now. So yeah, no, I I have been looking actually at an annual plan uh, quite a bit just because we are going internationally a lot more. I just, I don't worry as much about domestic travel because, you know, even though I guess a lot of health plans have restrictions for out-of-state coverage, 
or not restrictions, but just maybe they don't pay out as well, or, you know, you can't get care for as long as you might back home or something like that. So I don't really worry as much about domestic travel, but, but yes, I think we are going to get an annual plan, but you know, that said, sometimes when you find yourself in other countries and you get sick, you get taken <laughs> way better care of, you know, you get small bills and good care. So, you know, it depends on where you're going. Europe, a lot of countries, that'll be the case, not necessarily everywhere else. Thailand, I hear the medical care mm-hmm. is also very uh, cheap there as well. And just in case uh, you're going to Thailand, there are no Disney parks there, though. All right. So that pretty much does it for um, our our overview of what to do uh, if you're having medical issues. Um, just kind of a reminder that, you know, theme parks, there are a ton of people there. They're all in close proximity. So, you know, you will get sick um, and it will happen. And so just really recommend you know, to take whatever precautions. I know almost everyone carries hand sanitizer with them now. They have taken away the hand sanitizer stations at Disney, but there's plenty of bathrooms. Um, so, you know, if you can deal with the terrible water pressure at Walt Disney World from the sinks, wash your hands as much as possible. That's right. All right. Well, let's close it out, Joe, with the Disney do or don't. What do you have for us? Yeah. So along that vein, um, my Disney don't is don't push it uh, in the parks, especially if you start feeling unwell. Um, in a worst case scenario, you're just going to you know, you're just gonna make it worse for yourself. You're just gonna get sicker and sicker. If you recall, um, our trip report with my friend Amy from a few months ago, like they arrived at Disney world, like they started feeling sick on the plane on the ride down there and they ended up not pushing it and had an amazing time because of it. But I can also imagine that if they had like pushed it the whole time, they would have just been feeling worse and worse, um, throughout the trip. And especially, uh, unless it's like the flu or COVID or something like that, a lot of illnesses are 24, 48 hours. So if you're on a longer trip, you know, you don't want to lose the battle and lose the war, you know, like just take the L for a couple days, take it easy. Um, or one or two of you take it easy. If only one or two of you are sick and, you know, um, salvage the entire vacation by feeling better for the rest of the time, because it is, you know, for those of you who are listening, who have been to Disney world or Disneyland or any Disney park, you understand this, but if you have not been yet, it is a real grind. And so, you know, when you're at work and you have a big deadline and you're already getting sick and you just get sicker uh, as you keep pushing yourself too hard, it's like that at Disney World, except for, um, you know, theoretically, you're supposed to be having fun. Exactly. Yeah. And great reminder, too, that these things often are short lived, especially if it's a kid sickness. I mean, they bounce back so quickly. I can't tell you how many times I've thought like the vacation has been ruined and the kid, you know, 12 hours later is like bouncing around happy and fit as a fiddle. So hope if you do have sicknesses in your family that they're more of, of that variety than uh, of the longer term or more more serious type. Yes. And then, um, of course, again, we don't wish anyone to get sick uh, on vacation or at Disney World. But if you do, hopefully this episode has helped you to find some ways to deal with that, alleviate that um, so that you can save as much of your trip as you can. All right. That will do it for this episode. Uh, as always, you can find us on youtube.com slash at Disney Deciphered. Um, you can find me at As Joe Flies on social media or Joseph Chung at travelmation.net. If you're looking to plan a trip, Leslie, where can people find you? At Trips with Tykes everywhere on social media and tripswithtykes.com on the internet. And final little episodes of this podcast, wherever you find podcasts, um, email us, DisneyDeciphered at gmail.com if you have any questions or thoughts. Thank you again, everyone, for listening. Please stay healthy and be well. And other than that, Leslie, thank you for taking the time to talk to me. And I will see you thinking of teacher jokes to make next, next episode. Thanks, Joe.